From the University of Alabama Department of Theater and Dance, this is Stage Talks. I'm here today with senior Cody Floyd, who is one of the actors in the production of The Colored Museum. Hey, Cody. Thanks so much for being here. Yes. So do you mind telling the listeners just a little bit about yourself before we get started? Of course, of course, of course. So my name is Cody Floyd. I'm 23 years old. I hail from Valley, Alabama. If you don't know where it is, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically from the other whole other side of Alabama by Auburn. Sorry if that offends anybody. Um, I'm a senior BFA theater major with a concentration in acting here at the University of Alabama. I've really enjoyed my time here, of course. And I got to be in the Colored Museum. That's right. And that's what we're talking about today. I'm so excited. Yes. So let's start at the beginning of the process. So you guys had auditions last semester. Tell me about what that process was like. So um, usually at the University of Alabama, what we do for our audition process is we fill out the application and then we get the audition day for usually the first two days of schools. Mm-hmm. We go in, we give our headshots and resumes, and then we go out there, present our two pieces or one piece or a song or whatever we want to do for it. And then we exit, we leave. <laughs> and then the next day, usually we'll find out if we got a call back either that night or early, very, very early in the morning the next day, letting us know, like, hey, we want you to call back and read for these roles that night. And then generally you go in and then you'd audition for those roles. You read mm-hmm. for them or do whatever the director would ask you for them. Uh-huh. They give you a little bit of directions or it's like side coaching or something like that. Okay. And then you'd find out that night or once again, either early the next yeah. day whether you got cast or not. Okay. For my process specifically, I was actually on contract still in Chillicothe, Ohio. I was working in the outdoor genre Tecumseh. Oh, and um, so I had to send in a virtual audition. Thankfully, our artist director, um, Mr. Dom, like he really was just so ex. He made it really accessible for mm-hmm. me and Mr. Matt Davis as well over stage management um, and the director as well. I thank them very, very much. Um, and I sent my email of my audition and my materials as well as like for senior showcase and my headshot and my resume for everything that we were doing in the okay. fall. So you auditioned for the Colored Museum back in August. Right. You guys had quite a bit of time from the point you got cast to... The start of the production, exactly. right? Okay, literally, okay, literally so much. Very so. cool. Okay, I just want to touch on the fact that you got to audition virtually. I think that's one of the best things that happened through COVID. Right, was accessibility to theater. I, I really agree. do. I agree. You know, even facts like you know the fact that you were literally a working actor on contract. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And you weren't penalized for that. You know exactly. And so that's that's just great. So hopefully that's going to stay around. Yeah, totally. I'm, like, I'm, I'm saying fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. And it's, I mean, it's so good. Okay, great. So you auditioned for the production in August yes. and you found out pretty soon that you were cast, right? right? How familiar were you with the show was when it, you got cast? I was actually not familiar with this show at all. Um, so I heard, I already knew who right wrote it, George C. Wolf, of uh. course, and I heard of the Colored Museum, but I didn't really know what it was about. Okay. Um, I got the synopsis of it and stuff like that, mm-hmm. black stereotypes and stuff like that, new and old. And I was like, okay, cool. We're doing a play about black stereotypes, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was, but I was like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Like, what did it mean back then? What does it mean now? Yep. And then after my first read, I was like, wow, this is way deeper mm. than and inclusive than I really expected. And I just love that aspect of it immediately. So That's like great. I couldn't wait to the first day of rehearsals. Awesome. And just for our listeners who did not get to see the production, it was absolutely incredible. And I'm just gonna read the first two paragraphs of the director's note. The director for this production was Christian Tripp, yes. who everyone adores. Oh and <laughs> just an absolute incredible performance. So um these were the first two paragraphs of his note. And I think it really gives color (laughs) to (laughs) the theme of the production. Exactly. Okay. So Christian says, when I first opened the pages of the colored museum, its bright world and humor gripped me. Never before had a script crossed my path that dared to explore the black ethos with such wit and fever. However, since the show began to walk on its own, its meaning has matured. Over the course of the last year, the questions presented by playwright George C. Wolfe continue to rattle me. None greater than, what is it to be an African-American? And what is it to be an African-American 
through the eyes of a predominantly white society. So let's talk a little bit about the production. Totally. Um, Cody, in your words, if someone asked you, what is the Colored Museum? Like, what would you kind of say to them? Um, in a word, I would say eternal, mm. everlasting, full of life. Okay, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that's just what it is to me. We came in the first day and we did what we typically do in um, UA Theater Dance Productions. Um, we did a table reading of, of the thing. And, like, Christian hearing it out loud, I, I could see by the end of it, he was just in awe. He's just like, golly, mm. I, now after reading it much by myself, yeah. hearing these actors actually getting a chance to do it, now we can get into the meat of things and we can delve into it. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to go into this process as it as if it was a lab. Mm. So like what we did was we took some certain techniques that we learned in our acting two class, typically taught by Mr. Seth Panish. Now Christian Tripp also teaches those classes as well to um, our undergraduates. And like it was like landing action, repeating action, which is landing thought, landing your action, getting your words through and getting more out of them. Mm -hmm. Or like doing internal and external improvs in order to get yourself into that character into that lifestyle yeah. like really embodying and becoming who you're portraying on stage mm -hmm. and we also did some other things like gap of expectation playing opposites and differences and stuff like that and your meanings and your lines and i thought all of that was beautiful work because not only is that just acting work but that's that's human work too yeah. that's artist work mm -hmm. and like i believe that i heard a quote a quote once that said that theater is heart work mm -hmm. and, I, and i believe that truly because i find out who i am every single day that i get to do this beautiful art for find out more things about myself and other people's in the human body or the human mind and behavior. And I just love it. And I hope that I get a chance to do it for the rest of my yeah. life. Well, oh my gosh, you absolutely will. <laughs> and I know Seth is going to be really pleased when he hears all the techniques that he teaches were yes. used in the production. <laughs> totally. That's always good to know yes. that things we're taught are in fact being used. So that's lovely. So Cody, in the production, all of the actors play multiple characters. Right. How was that experience and rehearsal process diving into all those characters? I know you in the production played characters that were, I mean, polar opposites of each other. Right. So what was that process like? It was a stretch. Truly, it was. Um, when I first seen the monologue or the exhibit for um, Junior Robinson's characters, A Soldier with a Secret, first of all, I was like, this character is completely opposite of me. Oh my gosh. I'm mm -hmm. like, this, like, I like to personally fix things. Yes. Yep. Especially like in my friends when they have things. And that's where I mess up a lot of times. I try mm -hmm. to fix things that aren't ready to be truly like fixed yet. Like, mm -hmm. there's still the cracks. And like, sometimes you just need to let things heal on their own. But Juni takes a little bit a step further than I would. He actually mm -hmm. takes their painting with him and he goes in and he just, you know, pss, he like, Herbalism, I believe that it's called. Okay. Um, he sticks a needle in their veins and he just blows a little air into it and their face just goes completely limb. And what he doesn't see anymore, but that he used to see because he believes it was a gift given to him, was their pain, their future, um. and all the trials and tribulations they would have to face going down their path. Mm -hmm. And like, he, did, he just didn't want to have to deal with that, you know? And he didn't want them to have to deal with that. So he just take their pain, like, whenever he just felt like it was getting too much for him or yeah. too much for them, you know, because mm -hmm. he really loved his friends. And that's the similarity between me and Junie. I feel like we do anything to protect our friends or anything. He just takes it a little bit stint in, uh, further than I would. <laughs> Walter, um, Walter Luby Willie Jones. I'm like, his four names. Oh, my gosh. George. <laughs> <laughs> but I love playing him. Oh, my gosh. He was definitely my favorite character to play um, every single night. Um, He was the son in Last Mama on the Couch play. Now, he, what he really wanted was acknowledgement, people to accept him, to see that he was working hard out there. But it seemed every time that he would do something so big, somebody else would come in Ugh. and like just take it away from yep. him, snatch it from him. And he believes it was the man, the man mama, <laughs> as I like to say in the show. It wasn't really that. It was that he didn't trust his work. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't really trust that he was enough. So some, every time somebody like the lady in plaid came in, mm -hmm. or his sister Medea, or like just mama in general, like they would take these things away from him. And he's just like, yo, what's going on? This is my play. But it's not about you. It's about something way bigger and deeper than yourself. So like that acknowledgement and that acceptance first has to come for yourself. Like mm -hmm. true, like self love is the most important love. I know it's a cliche thing to say, no, but, it's, but true. it's so very, very true. So mm -hmm. that was my favorite part about playing Walter. And the last person that I played, which is the one that I struggled with the most, was the man mm -hmm. in Symbiosis alongside my beautiful um, scene partner, Marcus Johnson. 
Now, I really didn't get this piece, like I said, in um, the talk back off on, on, after one of our Friday performances. Yes, and we're going to talk about the talk back yes. too, but okay. keep going. Absolutely yes. wonderful. I did not understand what that scene was truly about until Marcus said one specific line. I cannot remember what it lo- was for the life of me, but I completely saw a change in Marcus's tone and voice mm-hmm. and like this that active listening thing yep. you know i heard it and i was like whoa like i take the scene in a whole different way now because i thought it was about growing up but it wasn't what i believe now to me what i believe that it is about is he was trying to mold himself into what he thought society would actually like or what mm-hmm. he thinks that he should be in society's eye mm-hmm. when all you ever have to really be is yourself be true yeah. to yourself first like love thy own self you know that that's it which is exactly, you know, what you just said. Yes. Christian's note, he says, his question he poses to the audience is, what is it to be African-American through the eyes of a predominantly white society? Exactly. You yes. Know? That makes complete sense. And as an audience member, as an audience, as a white audience member, right. to see all of these exhibits, you know, scenes in front of me, you know, I could see how real it was for all the performers and that made it so real to me and hopefully to the rest of the audience, which speaking of the audience. So every Friday of our productions at the Department of Theater and Dance, we have a talk back. And they're a little bit different every time, depending on what the director wants or mm-hmm. needs. Um, sometimes we bring in a guest professor. Sometimes it's a Q&A with the audience, totally depending. For this show, our moderator was the dramaturg of the production, Dr. Misha Hadar. And he led a conversation that began with the cast, and then he opened the floor up to audiences' questions. And I think it was a really great opportunity because just like in a museum, I think about a museum when you're at an exhibit and the description's in front of you. At the show, the description wasn't there, but the audience got to ask those questions. And it was almost like, reading the description, you know, Mm. from y'all's point of view. So tell me a little bit about the talk back from your experience. What did you think that the audience gained? Were you surprised by anything they said or even just your conversations with the cast? How was that? Honestly, like the conversations with the cast was just amazing. Like all, like, I feel like I learned something new every single time that I listen to them. Like even listening to like Marcus or like Trinity from the talk back, I was just like, this is so much knowledge right here. Mm. They're giving us gems and, and just beautiful like jewels and I'm like I've never even thought about it in this way so hearing their perspectives is also always beautiful Mm -hmm. but from the audience perspective I honestly it surprised me that that many people stayed and I was just like wow that is amazing these people are wanting to educate themselves and that's all like education is a beautiful thing folks I'm telling you it is especially like white people wanting to learn about the African-American experience you know because like they just seen this show 11 exhibits coming to life like every single which away like it's just like oh you think the show's gonna go this way no it's actually gonna go this way and we just keep on misdirecting the audience to come to the party in the end where topsy comes out and then we're all unified together it's mm-hmm. the last um scene or exhibit of the show and you see it's all on stage together and what it really is is it's not like the individual characters or anything even though we're all doing our little individual bits and monologues or poses it's being one unified front like we mm. are black we are beautiful yeah. and we are here like like can you see us now be seen be heard that's a, one of the number one things that i ever was taught in um theater like when i was first getting into the acting thing you know and like i feel like that's the embodiment of that whole phrase that that just how it ends in the show i always am told the phrase you don't know what you don't know but when you know right you do better. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what works like the Colored Museum do is they educate first off and then they employ to do better. You know what I mean? Because after, I know from my perspective, you know, after seeing that work, you can't leave and then that be that. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it sticks with you and it forces you to do better, to be better, and to continue to learn. Right. And to me, that's what I really got from the talk back was Dr. Hadar talked about how the show was written in the 80s. Right. I had no idea it was written in the 80s. To me, me it was it was so like topical. Like, yes. like literally it could have been written last year mm-hmm. and I would not have been shocked. Right. And I think just that fact that it was written in the 80s, mm-hmm. we were all shocked by that. The fact that it was still so relevant 
just proves to me as like a, a white person and my white peers that we have so much work to do. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because George C. Wolf, you, your fellow actors, director, are doing the work. Right. And I think that's what the audience really found out too. It's it's us. Yeah. We've got to do the work. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think it was really a great opportunity. I'm so glad Misha opened the floor for the audience. I didn't know he was going to. Yeah, totally. I had no idea. Yeah. And I'm so glad he did. One of the questions at the talkback, and I wanted to get your response. Yeah. I know you guys responded at the <laughs> talkback, but, you know, you've had a few days to think. You're great. And someone asked if, this was actually a common question. Mm-hmm. They asked if you guys ever get discouraged by the lack of response from the audience. And you guys all had mixed comments on that. Um, so I just want to know what was what's your perspective? Is that something that as an actor is important to you? Is it something as an actor in this particular show was important to you? So as um, Christian Tripp, said um at the talk back that friday now i i agree with him completely 100 percent. so just like in acting when you have a scene partner or you're talking to the audience or whatever's happening god i I don't know who you're talking to Mm -hmm. if somebody's not saying something back to you or like giving you a reaction that you're expecting that is also a reaction Mm -hmm. it is and you can use that as the actor or whoever you're portraying on stage and like you can use that in your work you know, that can fuel that fire in you. Like, cause that is a response. It truly, mm-hmm. truly is. Like, in that silence, mm-hmm. that's what pulls the audience in. Mm-hmm. Like, it truly, truly is. So when I got those moments in things like A Soldier with a Secret, when they were clapping in other things, but they didn't clap at mine, I believe Soledad um, like, said something that night, and she was just like, that's a reaction, too, because mm-hmm. they're just sitting with that, and they're realizing that, and they're thinking about it. And that's a beautiful thing. That's all I could ever ask for, truly. So that's something that I know I got to use in my work, and right. I, I loved it. And, you know, this production, we can tell by the ticket sales that it really did impact people. Yeah. The Color Museum had two sold-out performances, which, Woo-hoo. yeah, which is exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really exciting. I know one night they had a standby list of, like, almost 20 people yeah. like at the door trying to get in. So it really was an impact. And so we'll close with that. So, Cody, from the production of the Color Museum, what are you going to take with you in your career? And what do you hope that the people that watch it or even listen to this interview, what do you want people to take with them as well? So me, what I'm going to take is that it was actually something that one of my scene partners, Marcus Johnson, had said to me. I was like doing, like you know, I don't know if you've ever heard of the term like post-show depression, but I literally after I got off stage, I was like, oh man, rest in peace, Junie. Rest in peace, Walter. Rest in peace, the man. And then Marcus said something so beautiful to me. And they just put me in check. And they were like, girl, these characters never die. They Mm -hmm. are eternal. They are forever. And they are everlasting. That's what a museum is anyway. And I was like, wow. And that really just opened my eyes and my heart, truly. And it was just so full in that moment. So that's what I'm going to take with me. Your characters are eternal and everlasting. And that's what I hope that this production was for everybody. That's it for Stage Talks. Make sure you follow the University of Alabama Department of Theater and Dance on Instagram and Facebook at UA Theater Dance. And like our YouTube channel for all new episodes of Stage Talks. Thanks for listening and Roll Tide.